thank you very much to everyone who has shown up. I'm sorry that I was a little bit late. I guess I am really becoming a professor. So in any case, uh, the talk that I want to give is on intentional wandering, how to find hidden history. The theme of this year's conference is hidden history. And I'm sure by now you've heard quite a bit about little known historical sources and stories. In the short time I have, I want to explain how you can uncover the past and discover hidden history. Uh, and don't worry, I'm going to have uh, some slides with this, so you aren't just going to be looking at my COVID cut. But in any case, if you're a podcaster looking for an uncovered topic, a history major scrambling to pick a thesis or dissertation, or just a history buff who wants to learn how you can go where no one else has gone, then this is the talk for you. I argue that we as historians can't have too rigid a focus on a topic and instead we need to go down the rabbit hole, go off on every tangent and follow every loose thread because if we dive deeper into obscurity, the stories that we find can be world changing. Most major events have already been thoroughly covered and each one has its own Wikipedia page. Modern historians have the task of uncovering unknown episodes of history or presenting a unique take on history. As historians, there is almost no way to tell what topic will be groundbreaking. I want to give two famous examples, that from Robert Darton and Fernand Braudel. And for here, I am going to jump in to the screen sharing and share my lovely uh, pictures with you. All right, fantastic. Oh, whoa. Recursion right here. Sorry, one second. We were all uh, getting used to this. Is this, um, let's see what you can see. Oh, so you should be seeing the fantastic uh, Robert Darden here. Here, I'm going to put uh, this on the slideshow. All right, I know this is, uh, somebody commented that this is the most pr professorial uh, thing you're going to see. And considering that we are all having to go from the audio medium of podcasting to the video medium that we are in right now, we uh, are all having to go through a little bit of bump. So if you'll bear with me, I have some fantastic pictures of camels. So once we can get to them, if my, uh, if the slideshow will start. Hang on. No, it doesn't want to cooperate. All right, you know what? Uh, we'll just go picture by picture. Again, my apologies. So in any case, uh, I wanted to talk about first uh, Robert Darton. Uh, Robert Darden is an American historian of revolutionary France. Darden's early career examined publishing on the eve of the French Revolution. After working at this for a while, Darden realized that a lot of contraband literature entered France through publishers in Switzerland. For most historians, the great Enlightenment thinkers were far more important and interesting than the publishers themselves, and so the printers were largely ignored. But when Darton visited the archives in Switzerland, he found stacks of scandalous materials by hack writers who were just as published as the great Enlightenment thinkers, if not more so. Darton discovered that the entire literary corpus of pre-revolutionary France wasn't Voltaire, Rousseau, and high-minded intellectuals. Instead, the average Parisian was reading what was essentially smut that slandered the French aristocracy, gossiped about illicit affairs and other lowbrow material which aimed to discredit the ancien regime. His discovery formed the basis of his book, The Literary Underground of the Old Regime, which is one of the all-time great books on revolutionary France and is on every French history graduate student's comps list. Darden was researching the publishing process of 18th century writers, and by going down this tangent, he radically altered a century of historiography on the social history of the French Revolution. The next person I want to talk about is Fernand Braudel, a French historian and arguably the greatest of the Annalistes, one of the most prestigious groups of historians ever. 
Braudel was in graduate school and looking for an interesting topic and supposedly told his advisor he was going to write a dissertation on Philip II of Spain and the Mediterranean world. His advisor then suggested that instead of writing about Philip and the Mediterranean world, why not write about the Mediterranean world and Philip? This suggestion led Braudel to write a three-volume magnum opus that is among the greatest works of historical inquiry of the 20th century. As is the case with most great books, many historians have their own copy which collects dust on a shelf. If you haven't read it, what makes it so incredible is that Bradell was writing a novel history wherein he flipped the script on previous historiography. Most historians looked at human activity either in the form of great individuals, the masses, institutions, organizations, and nations. Braudel researched how the world impacted people and his findings were truly incredible. Some of the highlights were the difference in culture between valleys, hills, and mountain towns. Braudel showed that places with low elevation produced more food, were better irrigated, and were more easily accessible, leading to larger populations and transference of culture through migration or conquest. And just as a modern example, I wanted to provide a photo of the Shakespeare and Company from Paris, which has a diverse crowd in front of it, including a Buddhist monk. I bet you didn't know that Paris was home to a very large gathering of Tibetan monks. In fact, it has one of the, I believe it is the largest st golden statue of Buddha, the largest statue of Buddha in all of Europe. In contrast, People living in the mountainous areas had less access to food and thus smaller populations, but they were also harder to conquer because of the rough ge uh, geography, and mountain peoples became bastions of older culture. And here, here is an example of Rocamador, the uh, beautiful French town in the countryside that is also home to the legendary sword Durandal. Meanwhile, those in valleys and river basins developed hybrid cultures of numerous peoples. Another great discovery was the effect of animals on populations. Braudel looked at the conquests of the Arabs into Spain and southern France and contrasted this with the Turkish conquest of Anatolia and the Balkans. So why did the Arabs fail in their conquest of France while the Ottoman Turks succeeded in conquering the Balkans? There are a number of geopolitical and economic reasons, but Bardell argued that one major reason was camels. And isn't that a nice looking camel? The camels that the Arabs use look something like this, which is the one hump Somali camel. These camels are adept at going long distances in hot conditions and were crucial in the Arab conquest of the Middle East and Spain, which has a similar climate. Europe north of the Mediterranean has a temperate climate which these camels are ill-suited for. Thus, the primary pack animal and cavalry of the Arab conquerors couldn't match French horses. In contrast, the Turks used two hump camels, similar to the modern Bactrian camel. These camels are used to, uh, these camels are used to cold, harsh conditions found on the Eurasian steppe. They are also adept at climbing. This was crucial for the Turks since Anatolia and the Balkans are rocky and often very cold. Using these camels, the Turks could travel long distances across inhospitable terrain and chase down their foes even when they hid in the mountains. Thus, one of the reasons why the Turks succeeded in Europe and the Arabs failed was due to the differences in their camp.
Hey everyone, um, Gary was just having technical difficulties before the stream, so I'm I'm thinking that maybe his computer shut down again. In the next five minutes, he'll probably be back. Sorry about that. Yep, just sent a, an email to Gary. I'll let you guys know when he answers. Yep, Gary just informs me that his internet gave out. He'll be here in just a few moments.
Okay, um, sorry to let everyone know, but Gary's just told me that his Wi-Fi isn't working still, so I th think, unfortunately, the session might be cancelled. I'm going to give the link to his podcast so everyone can access it. I'm sorry that this happened.